कुमार सामी नायक है बोम वाली बुलेटो का रेडियो फिजी टू में पुराना गाना लगे हमें बहुत अच्छा लगे रेडियो फिजी टू देश की इन द न्यूज टू नाइट प्रपोज पुलिस बिल कैन वैक्सीनेशन इज की टू फीजी रिकवरी एंड वैक्सीनेशन रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड अवे फ्रॉम द स्टूडियोज ऑफ एफ बी सी सुबह Bulawayo Fiji Prime Minister Woringe Mbaini Marama has advised the Ministry of Defence and National Policing to carry out consultations on the Police Act of 1965 and not the proposed police bill speaking to FBC News Mbaini Marama says any review of laws relating to the Fiji police force must be based on the existing act Mbaini Marama earlier stressed the text of the so-called draft Fiji police bill does not represent government policy and will not be presented to parliament he confirms the bill was drafted and released unilaterally by the police force and it was not cleared by the solicitor general's office nor brought to cabinet for government's endorsement the pm adds it is standard practice that government agencies consult within the government before seeking consultation from the public Yes, I've told them to uh, bring back the bring back the consultation on the bill, and continue the consultation on the on the Police Act of 1965. That's that's what should be done. And we now join Lena Reese live. Lena, what has the Prime Minister said on the process of consultation on the Police Act? The Prime Minister highlighted the pressing need to update the 56-year-old legislation that is governing the Fiji police force in the context of new and evolving criminal threats. Now, Bani Marama says that they cannot preserve public safety in the 21st century through backward steps that will erode public trust in the police force, Edwin. Lina, who will be responsible for drafting the revised bill? Now any future amendments to the Fiji Police Act will be made available through public consultation once it is endorsed by the Solicitor General's office and cabinet. Mayor Marama says that they've retracted the current public consultations on the proposed police bill as this was not endorsed by the Solicitor General or cabinet Edwin. Nakalina Prime Minister Vorengi Mbaini Marama says he is looking forward to receiving the COVID-19 vaccine when his time comes. He maintains that vaccination is key to Fiji's recovery from the year-long impact of the pandemic. Health Minister Dr. Ifiremi Wangainambete has also responded to concerns over the AstraZeneca jab, saying it has the backing of international agencies. As border and quarantine control workers continue to be vaccinated, the Prime Minister confirms he is also waiting in line. Our COVID-19 frontliners who have served us so dutifully this uh, past 12 months are receiving their first vaccination through this week. And I plan to be vaccinated as soon as I become eligible. Some European countries have stopped using the AstraZeneca vaccine after reports of blood clots in those who've received the jab. However, authorities here say the World Health Organization and other agencies have issued no cause for alarm. Continued discussions seem to indicate uh, that uh, you know it is safe. Uh, that uh, you know the vaccine vaccinations continue in many other countries. There have been uh, 17 or 70 million vaccinations that have happened with AstraZeneca up until now. As uh, healthcare professionals, I urge you all to join this great national effort to protect our people from the peril of the coronavirus. Lives, livelihoods, and our place in the world's recovery depend on it. Locals who had side effects from the vaccine did not require hospitalisation, and there have been no reports of blood clots. And the Ministry of Health opened the online self-registration for the COVID-19 vaccine this morning. Head of Family Health Dr. Rachel Devi says around 8,000 people have so far registered. Dr. Devi says the vaccination against COVID-19 is voluntary. Now, self-registration can be easily done if individuals know a few information, and these informations are the birth registration number. And apart from the birth registration number, you all obviously you need an, uh, a photo ID card. And uh, for these cards, we um, uh, we would uh, appreciate if there's a voter, a voter card, a tin card, drivers or students card, uh, basically which uh, verifies individuals. 
And Kritika Kumar joins us live now. Kritika, what else can you tell us about the registration process? Edwin, the Health Ministry has confirmed that the current vaccination program is only for adults who are above the age of 18. The head of family health, Dr. Rachel Devi, says once they are assured that the vaccine is safe for a younger population, they are going to move in that direction. The clinical test on the vaccination was done majority on the adults who were above the age of 18 before it was made available for use. The pregnant women can also up, uh, register for the vaccination. However, they will not get it as they are pregnant and the vaccination will be made available after that. The Ministry of Health has also reiterated that registration is uh, vital as it may ease the border restrictions. The registration is expected to end in April. Dr. Devi has also highlighted that uh, uh, the data collected from the registration will be used for the uh, vaccination passport. Edwin. Minaka Kritika. The defense in the trial of a former senior executive of a publicly listed company maintains there was collusion between the complainant and a prosecution witness. The defense filed a no case to answer submission in the magistrate's court today. The former senior executive is charged with three counts of indecent assault. Two counts relate to the first complainant who's alleged, who has alleged offenses were committed against her on separate occasions in 2019. The trial that started on Monday relates to the second complainant who alleges that an offense was committed against her in May of 2019. While making their submission, the defense maintained the claim that the prosecution witness, the woman's ex-boyfriend, met with her before taking the stand. It claimed this was clear as both the complainant and the witness had replied no comment to a number of questions. The defense said the second complainant was evasive, untruthful, had no credibility whatsoever and said her evidence should be disregarded. The prosecution denied that the uh, witness had met with the complainant before taking the stand, adding that... Her evidence was credible, however, said the woman delayed in lodging her complaint because she was afraid to do so at the time. The state submitted that it has substantial evidence for a case to answer and the defense cannot discredit the witness. The chief magistrate will deliver his judgment on the no case to answer application next Tuesday. And up ahead, filmmakers keen to shoot in Fiji. And Nasesi Private Hospital opened today. I to Radio Fiji Radio Fiji Radio Fiji 2 Desh ki Welcome back. Fiji's film industry has noted a significant increase in the number of international filmmakers keen to produce movies here. Trade Ministry's Permanent Secretary Shaheen Ali says they're working closely with the COVID-19 Risk Mitigation Task Force to ensure these filmmakers from India and the United States arrive safely. Details with Josiah Nanunga. A good number of film productions scheduled for last year have been postponed due to the pandemic and it commence over the next few months. Some of the uh, batches of uh, crew members uh, are still coming in and are part of the the quarantine the system and once that is uh, all clear and then the production will commence but there's a number of productions uh, from both India and US that are wanting to come. Ali says Fiji currently offers one of the best incentives for film production and the industry is adamant to contribute over 25 million dollars to our economy this year. Because we have one of the best um, incentives as far as film productions is concerned um, in, in shooting your productions in Fiji, we have some of the best locations. It's a good move, because, especially because we will, uh, need a lot of money. It's a good move because it will bring money to Fiji. Shoot for the Survivor Series will take place over the next few months, as the crew have just completed their quarantine. The industry since 2019 has contributed over $100 million to our economy. Chose Yenunga. FBC News. Fiji's second private hospital opened in Suva today. Opening the Nasese private hospital this morning, Prime Minister Voringem Bainimarama highlighted that Fiji is in the process of building the finest healthcare system in the Pacific. He says this is where institutions like Nasese Private work with the Ministry of Health and complement services.
The private hospital is the brainchild of Dr. Virgilio Diasa, who previously ran a medical clinic at the same location. Uh, the need in healthcare is great. Medicine is advancing by leaps and bounds all over the world. We should be proud to have this new jewel in the crown of our hospital system. Uh, it's a historic uh, day for us, after all those struggles. Eh? It's not easy to build up a hospital. It took us about, almost really, realistically, four years to build that. With all those struggles and planning, it goes with it. Nasese Private Hospital offers a range of medical services, including surgeries, birthing and maternity, lab tests, emergency medicine, as well as a specialized women's center. The private medicine is playing a, a critical role in that system, and this new Nasese Private Hospital is a part of that. This is Fiji's second private hospital, as we all know, and it is a very welcome addition to our system. The Prime Minister stresses that the government is responsible for ensuring Fijians get medical care such as surgery, physiotherapy, checkups and vaccinations. However, he points out that private medical clinics are part of an overall medical system working with the Health Ministry. Law enforcement agencies need to ensure that justice is served to victims of road accidents and penalties imposed on perpetrators, says the Education Minister. During the launch of the VIA Road Safety Education Program in Suva this morning, it was revealed that 382 children under the age of 20 were involved in road accidents and fatalities from 2010 to 2019. Police figures reveal that 50 children died in these accidents, while 220 sustained serious injuries and were hospitalized. Pranita Prakash reports. A global VIA program and initiative by the Total Foundation has been launched to address the issue of road safety. This program is actually targeting 10 to 18 years. And we are responsible for you because you are our students, right? But you are equally responsible for not only knowing the road safety rules, but also following the road safety rules. The police force says everyone must work towards reducing road fatalities and accidents. Between 2010 and 2019, 58 children between the ages of 6 to 10 years were involved in accidents. 73 were between the age of 11 to 15 years and 251 were between the ages of 16 to 20. Pranita Prakash, FBC News. Women continue to play a critical role in the makeup of the senior positions within the tourism industry. This was highlighted by the Fiji Marriott Resort uh, Momi Bay General Manager, who says they currently have 40% of female representatives as executives. Philippe Naikaso has more. Over 41% of women make up the staffing number of all the Marriott properties in Fiji, which is a vital component for the resort. Women have a large amount of empathy and are well-rounded and um, are strategically thinking forward and um, there's a lot of, being a guy, there's a lot we can learn also from women. During the resort's International Women's Day celebration today, the female staff were also encouraged to take on more managerial positions and not shy away from any opportunity. When I joined, I was the only female in the executive committee with 10 other males. Um, this year, we have about four executive committee members um, compared to how we were two years ago. That is 41% representation. A leadership program is also being planned by the resort, which will ensure more women are empowered. Um, after this is the time uh, that, you know, after the pandemic, uh, we certainly, uh, and we now have more female leaders uh, in the company that to drive the program, and hence we're introducing it this year. The resort will continue to promote inclusion of women and diversity in their workforce. Philippa Naikaso, FBC News. And now we join Whitney with tonight's business report. Thanks, Edwin. Coming up in business tonight... Stall owners happy with sales at Zone Meat. And rural hubs to help farmers. Stay with us. Hola. 
Nang Gonoa, di Lutoka, Butali Takanam Bula FM, Bertini Nambon 2N Seri. Bula FM, Nambon 2N Seri. Food stalls catering to those attending the school zone competition at the ANZ Stadium in Suva over the past few days are recording increasing revenue. Among the common stall owners is Ringe at the Nugu who decided to try selling food at the school competition meet after the COVID-19 pandemic affected her income. Dipesh Kumar reports. 53-year-old Ringe at the Nugu says the COVID-19 pandemic has affected her main source of income which she gets from selling mats and other handcrafted items. Yeah. Good crowd in the zone. This is the first year to attend the zone. But uh, the previous year, the, from the first, second, third, fourth year, I always attend the um, rugby. Another stall owner, 27 year old Gosai Raymond, says they are earning more from school meat than they do from selling in Suva in the evening. Just uh, doing extra work here, you guys can see we're coming to zone because the business there at the moment is not really good. So we have to do extra outside. We have to look for extra money. <laughs> Most of these businesses say that sales they have made here at these school meets are the highest they have recorded since the pandemic hit last year. They are hopeful that it will get even better when the Coca-Cola game starts next month. Dibesh Kumar, FBC News. We now join Sharon from HFC Bank with the latest from the money market. Good evening. The Aussie and Kiwi dollars were mostly stable, with both currencies generally treading water earlier today. The Australian dollar was flat, drifting away from a recent one-week high, while the Kiwi remained mostly unchanged. Earlier today, the Assistant Governor for the Reserve Bank of Australia restated the central bank's lower-for-longer rate view, while signalling monetary policy will not be used to control asset price gains. Meanwhile, the US Federal Reserve policy meeting remains the key event every market participant eagerly awaits. Markets are already pricing with a positive outlook, hoping the Fed will forecast U.S. economic growth for 2021 to be at the fastest rate in decades. However, on the data front, U.S. retail sales and industrial production data came out weaker than expected. It wasn't a cause of concern, although it may hint a bit of a drag on the U.S. economy over the coming months. But for now, that's all from your HFC Bank, Vinaka. Here are the local exchange rates as set early this morning. The money markets were very quiet today as most values remained relatively unchanged. While the Fiji dollar saw tiny declines versus the Chinese won, the US greenback, the Kina and the yen. It also saw minor gains over the Aussie and Kiwi dollars as well as the euro. On the commodities market, oil prices were unchanged at over $69 per barrel. Gold rose slightly to $1,733 per ounce. And silver dropped a few cents to close at $25.93 per ounce. The Fiji Agricultural Marketing Authority has plans to develop rural hubs in order to help farmers commercialize their produce. Chief Executive Alvin Sharma says setting up these hubs will make business easier for rural farmers. He says this is part of the AMA's rural and maritime strategy. Sharma says the AMA is mandated to take its services to the rural areas and develop the hubs. We are spreading money in, into these very remote and maritime regions. So we are helping create and improve livelihoods in these regions. We are the Fijians living in these areas who have very difficult access to market. Otherwise, they don't find markets for their produce. Can gradually develop into much more structured farmers or fishermen or agro or aqua producers. And that's it from business tonight. We now join Tale with the latest in sports. Thanks, Whitney. Good evening ahead in sports. We have the latest from the Super Zone 1. And Benjamin Joseph looks forward to next bout. This and more coming up. Hi, I'm Ini from Raki Raki. I love Gold FM, only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits.
defending champions of the Suva Zone 1, Ratusukuna Memorial School and Namosi Secondary School. Both retained their titles in the girls' and boys' division. RSMS won with 11 gold, 9 silver and 2 bronze medals. In second place is Dudley High School with 8 gold, 7 silver and 3 bronze medals. And Nasinu Secondary School settled for third with 7 gold, 6 silver and 3 bronze. In the girls' division, Namosi Secondary School again dominated with 16 gold, 8 silver and 7 bronze medals. In second place is Nasinu Secondary School with 6 gold, 3 silver and 1 bronze. And settling for third is Dudley High School with 5 gold and 5 bronze medals. And now we join Kara, who is live from the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Kara, talk us through some exciting aspects of the Suva Zone 1 meet today. Tale traditional champions of the Suva Zone 1 have, have maintained their winning momentum after the completion of the athletics competition today. Some records were broken throughout the three-day tournament and this is a clear indication that come the Coca-Cola Games, there will be stiff competition from participating schools. Also, for the first time, the Best Athlete Award was given to two field athletes who set new records in their respective events. The Best Female Athlete was given to Veronica Mateo of Mahat Magandi Memorial School who scooped two goals in the long jump and triple jump event. And in the, for the Best Male Award, it was given to Epeli Vakloloma of Besden College, who scooped two goals in the shot put and discus event. Also, a heartwarming scene witnessed today was the support from families. A special example was a 75 year old woman who came to support her grandchildren uh, who was competing in the Super Zone competition. Mind you, she was sitting on the wheelchair watching the entire competition. Let me reiterate that the 2021 Coca Cola Games will be different as students will be out to showcase their talent and unleash their potential. Tale. Thank you, Kara. It was an emotional day for Suva Zone 1 Blue Ribbon Champion Joshua Ndaunravuni of Ratusukuna Memorial School after bagging gold in the 100 meters final today. The former Ratukandavulevu school student dedicated the win to his late mother who passed away in 2018. Ndaunravuni ran a time of 11.23 seconds at the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Karlin Tavi reports. Winning his first gold without his mother by his side to cheer him on today was hard for Chosuan down Ravuni. My mom, she passed away in New Zealand. So she's my mother's side. I think that our guest too. My uncle. Down Ravuni will save the moment, but this is not the end for him as he prepares for the next leg, the Coca-Cola Games. It's, I had a late start, so I had this, uh, this is my mental thing just to, this time just to keep up and maintain. Dudley High School's Philomena Nassiliva was also crowned the Blue Ribbon Senior Girls Champion. This would be her fourth year participating in the Fiji Finals. I, I didn't know, I, was, I didn't accept, uh, unexpected, but I just think I'm not forgetting this so. one. Nasiliva claimed the gold medal, running a time of 13.49 seconds. Karlin Itavi, FBC Sports. Rehape Vuninda Kuo of Ratusukuna Memorial School stand the Suva Zone 1 officials dropping a bombshell in the intermediate girls' discus event at the, the ANZ Stadium in Suva. Vuninda Kuo set a new record in the discus throw with a throw of 32.39 meters, smashing the 19-year-old record of 29.52 meters set in 2002 by Dudley High School. The Kandabules meant business from her first throw. I was feeling nervous, but my partner made me feel comfortable, uh, comfortable and uh, gave me some confidence to throw today. Uh, we've also been bringing her for the summer series competitions that are held uh, fortnightly every Saturday at the AN ANZ Stadium, and she has been performing uh, very well. So we were, uh, it didn't come to us as a surprise that she broke the record. The 17-year-old has already set her target heading towards the Fiji finals. For Aiming for 40 meters girls to meters. have a model, uh, medalist, gold medalist and uh, to beat the record. We have set a target for her and that is 40 meters. So we will try to intensify our training. We'll go back and look at some of the footage that we have uh, from uh, professionals overseas and uh, see how we can improve on that. 
Winning the Kua dominated the discus throw as none of the other throwers came close to her second throw of 29.85 meters. Her final attempt also went in the 30s with a throw of 31.22 meters. Mahatma Gandhi Memorial School made headlines today with 14-year-old Nirav Kumar stunning the crowd, claiming gold in the 400 and 800 meters at the Suva Zone 1 meet today. Kumar also set a new record in the 800 meters with a time of 2 minutes 28 seconds, breaking the previous record of 2 minutes 31 seconds. The youngster shocked the crowd with his winning performance. To be honest, I really don't let race. Uh, the color race determine us. I just do my best uh, to sport and I don't let uh, their race get into my head. Kumar aims to put MGM on the 2021 athletics map, winning a gold medal at the Fiji finals. Pretty important because I've never seen anyone win a gold you know, for MGM in the cold games before. So it's going to be... It's going to be amazing for me and my school. Another athlete hoping to make a mark at the Fiji finals is a son of former long-distance runner Justin Hunter. Yeah, maybe if I just train some more, then I'd probably try to make it into the top three. But yeah, I need a lot more training. The two athletes will now focus on the Coke Games, which is scheduled for the 22nd to the 24th of next month. Competing for the first time in the Suva Zone 1 meet was a sweet experience for former Penang Sangam student Haofanga Koto. Koto won the gold medal in the junior boys high jump event representing Darli High School. The 15-year-old Vanuambalavu native says participating in a highly competitive meet has allowed him to reach new heights, but he knows more needs to be done. When I jump there, we cannot pass the 40. 1.4 meter, and I came here can pass the 150. Now I'm going to qualify through the Coca Games to improve my records. Off to his second outing in the South Pacific boxing promotion, Benjamin Joseph is looking forward to taking down opponent Ritesh Ganda. The Mbuda Savo Savo native will be fighting in the featherweight contest this Saturday at Prince Charles Park in Nandi. Benina Rakotong reports. Training to win is key for the younger brother of boxer Northern Prince Ndauni Vavana. I'm training hard for this to bring some... bring... Bring, bring the fans to justice. Boxing promoter Freddie Chan is confident this event will attract big crowds. Rumba people will be here. All of Bukwe village, the nearby villages. So we expect a big rumble in uh, the main event. Uh, Seven other Naliva, he's our cruiserweight champion. He's uh, also a pro box uh, light heavyweight champion. He'll be fighting against our own cruiserweight champion, which is uh, Ali Freddy Koyada. The fights will take place at Prince Charles Park in Nandi next weekend. The event will be live on pay-per-view through our FPC Pop channel, Venina Rakao Tonga, FPC Sports. Now to play of the day, we celebrate another Fijian born making headlines in Super Rugby. Silas Bunivalu joins the many Fijians in Australia who have been impressive in their career. That's it from Sports Tonight in New Media. News Corp signs a landmark three agreement with Facebook. This and more after the break. Today's hit music on Today FM. The fine weather over Fiji is expected to continue for the next day or two. In the west, clear skies and sunshine prevail today. From Pacific Harbour to Suva, some early morning showers gave way to a sunny day. And in the north, scattered early morning showers followed by clear skies. At sea, 15 to 20 knot southeast winds are generating moderate to rough seas. Turning to the tides, the next high tide is at 9.32 this evening, followed by low tide at 3.34 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.09. For tomorrow, we can expect a repeat of today's weather, early scattered showers, sunshine and the slim chance of a thunderstorm. The outlook for Friday, another generally fine day with a chance of showers. And in Fiji and Pulse tonight, we ask, what do you think about the Prime Minister's decision to can the draft police bill? 
what PMG is. I am thankful the Prime Minister has come out to stop consultations because I don't agree with the bill. It's no good. Like, it's my private uh, property. Eh? Like. It's a good call by the Prime Minister. We do not agree with the proposed bill. A once ignored dog captured the hearts of many people when it first appeared on TikTok. A rescue center worker saw the, dog, saw the video of the dog, tracked it down and adopted it, giving it a permanent home. And recapping our main stories, proposed police bill canned, vaccination is key to Fiji's recovery and vaccination registration underway. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station Gold FM to our poll question. This week we are asking, should Fiji kava exporters found mixing local and foreign kava have their licenses revoked? Visit our FBC News website to answer. And on to our shot of the day. This photo of the Suva City Harbour was taken by Rudy Vacamino, showing the beauty of the sunsets of Fiji. You can send us newsworthy pictures and videos. Email fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our various social media accounts, including Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. That's your news this evening. I'll see you again tomorrow. Until then, stay safe. Modemanda. And I'm from Motoka and I love Today FM. Today FM rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM.